Yes, yeah, so we are live on Facebook group. Um, trying to bring this up on. Um, nobody's in yet. Um, They'll start coming in in a moment. Yeah, see, when you start seeing this move up here, that's when you know. Yep, see, they Hello. Start. Okay. All right. Back up. Close all this out. What is. All right, well, we just have to work with it in the background. But Swabu, Robert, but Swabu. Mm -mm, no, I got it. I just, I restarted this one. Oh, wow. Yes, we do. You gotta look on the bottom shelf. It's a um, whole bag of them on the bottom shelf. Oh, you got those too. So, okay. Make sure you throw your um, yes, throw them away, please. Yes, you're mine. Yeah, so, leave, 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 I threw it away because it wasn't working. Oh. One moment. I'm going to go to the shop and get it fixed. You were going to ask me why it wasn't the point. Ain't I going to say it when I read it? No. No, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. Put some more there. Put some more there. Mommy, honey, stop saying hi. Oh, okay. People keeping y'all comfy. Well, I'll get it real quick. Thought about it last moment. Get some honey. Just in case once I start talking, the wind catch me. I catch an upwind or something. That way so I don't cough so much. But it's been good. Guys, I had this whole... My mom here. Yeah, no. Shayla, hey girl, hey Ali, y'all. Shalom. Okay, Shayla, hey girl, hey. All right, y'all. Uh, believe it or not, I went to bed like two hours ago. Nah, probably like three hours now. Let me tell you, <coughs> my um energy, I think, was back full force yesterday. Should my kicking me pen out the drawer over there, please? Back full force, and I knew <laughs> something. Um, when me and Bella left out just to go get a couple things for breakfast yesterday, right? Um, but we had promised the boys we'd get them all different basketballs. So I was like, you know, let's go to Walmart first. Went to Walmart. Um, I was in, I figured we was going to Walmart, go right to the section, grab the basketballs, possibly a toy for Bella because she wasn't letting it happen, leaving out the store without getting her anything. So I figured. Max 20 minutes. They didn't redid the Walmart. <clears throat> you got like 80 checkout lines. We got a self checkout. So I already knew where I was going. We got in there and started moving around looking at everything. And about after I would be in the Walmart, I realized, wait a minute, I ain't gotten winded either. I was like, okay, since we're about to go to look, I said we was gonna just get everything out one after I had been in there, I realized I got my second win. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get 
the food items from the grocery section over here, but Bella decided she wanted to put her toy back and get like this little doll house. It wasn't expensive, but the box was freaking huge. So that killed the cart space. So I was like, all right, yeah, you know what? I ain't getting a second bag, so we just gonna go ahead and go to Food Lion. Um, so we did that, but I noticed early that day that I had all my energy. Jim Scott, I love her. Hey, girl, hey, good morning. Um, and so we was gone, we was really, I was going to cook breakfast, but I was missing a couple of things. I really thought that probably we'd be gone maybe 30, 45 minutes, right? Because I said I was going to grab them basketballs. But we was gone like three hours. Dave was like, he called me. He was like, um, my stomach is on my back. <laughs> so we got back here about lunchtime when we left at breakfast. I'm like, oh, we lost track of time. <laughs> so, but anyway. I could tell yesterday that um, my strength had kicked back in. Look, the whole point of me even telling y'all that was why I went to bed so late. I went to bed about 5 o'clock this morning because um, last night after I cooked dinner, I was washing dishes and everything. I'm like, you know, let me just go ahead and I feel all right. I ain't really that tired. I'm just going ahead and clean up some stuff. So I started doing deep cleaning. Um, going through lawn. I actually stayed up and while I figured while I was cleaning other stuff, I could be getting laundry done too. So I went through a few loads of laundry and everything and I didn't scrub the kitchen down now. I'm spraying down the walls and wiping the walls down and all that stuff. Literally cleaning the house, the vacuuming, straightening up my bookshelf and stuff. All the books I got like, I had like 80 books <laughs> on my nightstand. And on the floor, I said, let me go ahead and take these down. I got the strength now. I made, I literally made three trips up and down the stairs to bring my books that were sitting on my nightstand. Because I have, like, this book stand. This, I got a, a pretty big nightstand, and it's, like, one of those skinny three-shelf ones. I removed all those books, made three trips up and down the stairs. The kids were asleep by the time except for Sia, my coffee buddy, who stays up late with me and arrives early with me some days. But anyway, I knew. I'm like, yep. Yeah. I called my mama <laughs> almost midnight. She thought something was wrong. I was like, yeah, no, I just wanted to let you know that I have you made some greens and I'm going to bring you some. She probably like, you can't wait to tell me that until the morning. You know, but I figured I was already up. And she possibly might be woke. If she wasn't, she sure woke up when I called her, right? But anyway, I don't know. I'm just running off at the mouth now, y'all. But I said all that to say, I feel like I'm about at 100 jerry peace and blessings all right y'all today it is monday october the 4th 2021 day 270 of year three of reading through the books of the law and the prophets another three year consecutive day count in 939 today y'all reading job 10 11 and 12 and then we start in chapter 9 of Caesar's Messiah. All right. Chapter three. Mm -hmm. This is what you call consistency, son. And that starts on page 235. I think it's 235, because 234 was a blank page. I'm 18. Yeah, we start on 235. Mm -hmm. I said I'm 18. Consistency is not my thing right now. It, it really should be. We got this big state job coming up, so you best believe huh. uh, you gonna be out there on that. Cause we we'll need, we we'll need what? He gonna hit me mm -hmm. No, son, mm -mm. I'll, I'll me and your dad. Mm -mm. No, we already talked about it last night. Oh, I'm surprised. Especially because we gotta get extra manpower. You gonna be one of the men, son. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Let's do the shema. Shema. Okay, I think I might be good, y'all. How the rest? The state job paying. <laughs> That's what do what we I'm pay you an hour already? So you keep this to yourself. You don't say that out loud, though. That's how much the job is paying you. You get paid by the hour. You're not on salary. You're lucky we chose to use you. Um, what am I doing? I'm going to leave him alone. But you really ain't had no choice. We tell you, hey, you work it. All right, y'all. Remember, the shimmer is found in Deuteronomy. Ooh. Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting at verse 3. Here, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may increase mightily, as Yahuwah, the mighty one of our fathers, has promised us in the land that flows with milk and honey. Here, O Israel, Yahuwah, our mighty one, 
his one. And you shall love you who are your mighty one with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand. And they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. And you who have commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear you who are our mighty one, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before you who are our mighty one, as he has commanded us. All right, y'all. You know what? I just thought about something. Trina and Robert. I just realized what you said. You said Trina is watching with you. So that means you made it here or Trina came to see you. But into who? Hey. Hey. All right. The married couples. Hey. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's. Let's do this. Uh, I was going to say this one. I think that they're finally on this, sub, on this subject or topic when it comes to debating. I'm going to say this. I don't think nobody's going to Sweet, you're here. Okay. You say debating? Okay. The topic that I usually be talking about. Uh -huh. I'm going to say this. I don't think nobody's going to win it. Better. There's always somebody better, son. Oh, yeah, for sure. Probably walk, walk, what I'm saying. walk humbly, okay? All right, Job, chapter 10. Job frames his plea to Yah. I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. I will say to Yah, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge you are bringing against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me, the work of your own hands, while smiling on the schemes of the wicked? Are your eyes like those of a human? Do you see things as only people see them? Is your lifetime only as long as ours? Is your life so short that you must quickly probe for my guilt and search for my sin? Although you know I am not guilty, no one can rescue me from your hands. You formed me with your hands. You made me. You Yet now you completely destroy me. Remember that you made me from dust. Will you turn me back to dust so soon? You guided my conception and formed me in the womb. You clothed me with skin and flesh, and you knit my bones and sinews together. You gave me life and showed me your unfailing love. My life was preserved by your care. Yet your real motive, your true intent, was to watch me, and if I sinned, you would not forgive my guilt. If I am guilty, too bad for me. And even if I'm innocent, I can't hold my head high, because I am filled with shame and misery. And if I hold my head high, you haunt me, I'm sorry, you hunt me like a lion, and display your awesome power against me, again and again. You witness against me. You pour out your growing anger on me and bring fresh armies against me. Why then did you deliver me from my mother's womb? Why didn't you let me die at birth? It, was, it would be as though I had never existed, going directly from the womb to the grave. I have only a few days left, so leave me alone that I may have a moment of comfort before I leave, never to return, for the land of darkness and utter gloom. I have only a few days left, so leave me alone that I may have a moment of comfort before I leave, never to return for the land of darkness and utter gloom. It is a land as dark as midnight, a land of gloom and confusion, where even the light is dark as midnight. Next chapter, Job chapter 11. Zophar's first response to Job. Then Zophar, the Nathamite, replied to Job, Shouldn't someone answer this torrent of words? Is a person proved innocent just by a lot of talking? Should I remain silent while you babble on? When you mock Yah, when you mock Yah, shouldn't someone make you ashamed? 
you claim my beliefs are pure and I am clean in the sight of Yah. If only Yah would speak. If only he would tell you what he thinks. If only he would tell you the secrets of wisdom. For true wisdom is not a simple matter. Listen, Yahuwah is doubtless punishing you far less than you deserve. Can you solve the mysteries of Yah? Can you discover everything about the Almighty? Such knowledge is higher than the heavens. And who are you? It is deeper than the underworld. What do you know? It is broader than the earth and wider than the sea. If Yahuwah comes and puts a person in prison or calls the court to order, who can stop him? For he knows those who are false and he takes note of all their sins. An empty-headed person won't become wise any more than a wild donkey can bear a human child. If only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to him in prayer. Get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you. Then your face will brighten with innocence. You will be strong and free of fear. You will forget your misery. It will be like water flowing away. Your life will be brighter than at noonday. Even darkness will be as bright as morning. Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected and, re and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid. And many will look to you for help. But the wicked will be blinded. They will have no escape. Their only hope is death. Job chapter 12. Job's fourth speech, a response to Zophar. Then Job spoke again. You people really know everything, don't you? When you die, wisdom will die with you. Well, I know a few things myself, and you are no better than I am. Who doesn't know these things you've been saying? Yet my friends laugh at me, for I call on Yahuwah and expect an answer. I am a just and blameless man, yet they laugh at me. People who are at ease mock those in trouble. They give a push to people who are stumbling, but robbers are left in peace. And those who provoke Yahuwah live in safety, though Yahuwah keeps them in his power. Just ask animals, and they will teach you. Ask the birds of the sky, and they will tell you. Speak to the earth, and it will instruct you. Let the fish in the sea speak to you, for they all know that my disaster has come from the hand of Yah. For the very, I'm sorry, for the life of every living thing is in his hand, and the breath of every human being. The ear tests the words it hears, just as the mouth distinguishes between foods. Wisdom belongs to the age, and understanding to the old. But true wisdom and power are found in Yahuwah. Counsel and understanding are his. What he destroys cannot be rebuilt. When he puts someone in prison, there is no escape. If he holds back the rain, the earth becomes a desert. If he releases the waters, they flood the earth. Yes, strength and wisdom are his. Deceivers and deceived are both in his power. He leads counselors away, stripped of good judgment. Wise judges become fools. He removes the royal robe of kings. They are led away with ropes around their waists. He leads priests away, stripped of status. He overthrows those with long years and power. He silences the trusted advisor and removes the insight of the elders. He pours disgrace upon princes and disarms the strong. He uncovers mysteries hidden in darkness. He brings light to the deepest gloom. He builds up nations and he destroys them. He expands nations and he abandons them. He strips kings of understanding and leaves them wandering in a pathless wasteland. They grope in the darkness without a light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. And that, my beautiful people, is our reading for today. That was Job 10, 11, and 12. So let's hop on over here to Caesar's Messiah. And remember... If you want to get a copy, I don't I don't get paid for telling y'all about it, nor reading it. But a lot of people ask, in every video, whatever we're reading, the extra curricular book that we're reading, um, I always put the link to it 
where you can get it from. I give you the same link where I got mine from. Um, so for this, there's the PDF version, the um, the Audible version, and the hardback or paperback version where you can get from all of them. You can get from Amazon. I use Amazon everything. Um, but also, yeah, and also um, the first little pamphlet we read about the true authorship of the New Testament. I've been keeping that that link for those things in here with Caesar's Messiah because they kind of go together. It's the same topic, revealing the truth about the New Testament, its authors and all the shenanigans and the wool that has been pulled over the eyes of the entire world, right? All right, y'all. So all of that is always in the description box on Facebook and in YouTube. And some of the extra stuff that I mentioned, if I remember, I forgot to go look up that root plant yesterday because I got sidetracked. Um, but it'll be pinned in the comment section as well. Mom, shalom, shalom. All right, y'all. Page 235. We start a new chapter. It's chapter 9. Until all is fulfilled is the, um, the title of chapter 9. Let's see how long this is. Chapter 9 is a pretty good size. We definitely not going to read all that today. All right. 263. Okay, it's about 30 pages. A little over 30 pages. Maybe. No, a little under 30 pages. All right. Until all is fulfilled. I have shown that elements of Jesus' ministry, when viewed as a whole, can be seen as a prophetic outline of Titus's military campaign through Judea. In fact, the New Testament and Wars of the Jews creates a number of other prophecies and fulfillments that can be seen as a part of this satiric system. Many of the Jew I'm sorry, many of Jesus's astrological eschatology, eschatological or doomsday prophecies are presented in Matthew twenty one through twenty five. I will begin the analysis of the relationship between the New Testament doomsday prophecies and Titus's campaign by first citing a passage from the Wars of the Jews. That might be our title for the day. Jesus' doomsday prophecies. Something like that. It was going to be part of the title. Okay. The passage, I know some people, I don't know, some people just want to give me, if they ain't been here, I already know. I get the messages, they just come. They'll they be ready to save my soul, put me back on the right track. <laughs> I'm going to leave people alone because I get it. I get it. I used to be them. The passage contains a number of parallels with the New Testament that are historically famous, as well as one of the two lampoons of the New Testaments, Jesus, that are arranged like bookends around Josephus' description of the destruction of the temple. The other of the two bookend lampoons is the passage describing the son of Mary whose flesh was eaten, which I have discussed previously, because Jesus used the temple as a self-designation and compared his destruction to the destruction of a temple, juxtaposing these two lampoons with the destruction of the temple is audacious. The two lampoons of Jesus literally touch the chapter that describes the temple's destruction in the western translation of wars of the jews which i cite throughout this work there are only 11 pages of text between the son of mary whose flesh was eaten passage and the passage that contains the character that i refer to below as the woe saying jesus Okay, this woe saying Jesus, who is a <coughs> who is a clear lampoon of the New Testament, Jesus was himself recorded by Josephus as one of the signs that preceded the destruction of the temple. My little squirrel friend is here today, y'all. I look forward to seeing this squirrel in the morning. Maybe he doesn't come to see me or to hear the word. Maybe it's just his morning thing. With this is just the path he travels every day. You know, we'll we'll say. You know, because animals can be more consistent than we are. We just say this is just his normal course of the day. And I just started recognizing that he was coming back and forth every single day. Okay. The signs recorded by Josephus as having preceded the destruction of Jerusalem 
caused many early church scholars to believe that the sign the signs Jesus foresaw in Matthew 23 and 24 had come to pass. Let me read it again. The signs recorded by Josephus as having preceded the destruction of Jerusalem caused many early church scholars to believe that the signs Jesus foresaw in Matthew 23 and 24 had come to pass. The parallels that exist between Jesus and Josephus' list of signs have been known since the beginning of Christianity. As Hippolytus wrote, sir, I'm sorry, as Hippolytus wrote in circa 200 CE, quote, what then? Are not these things come to pass? Are not the things announced by thee fulfilled? Is not their country Judea desolate? Is not the holy place burnt with fire? Are not their walls cast down? Are not their cities destroyed? Their land, do not strangers devour it? Do not the Romans rule the country? End quote. The parallels between the two lists of signs do seem too exact to have occurred by chance. I disagree, however, with Hippolytus's belief that they were the result of supernatural causes. I would point out that whenever two documents have similarities too exact to have been caused by chance, Parisomi requires that the first theory to explore be that the two works have emanated from the same source. This is the simplest theory and should be maintained until another explanation is shown to be more plausible. In any event, the following passages from the Wars of the Jews and the New Testament are the example, par excellence, of the relationship that so many church scholars have noted between these two works. What Jesus predicts, Josephus records as having come to pass. As having come to pass. Quote, Book 6, Chapter 5, The Great Distress, The Jews... Okay, it should have like a comma or something. Okay, book six, chapter five, the great distress. The Jews were in upon the conflagration of the holy house concerning a false prophet and the signs that preceded this destruction. While the holy house was on fire, everything was plundered that had, that can't, look, look, let me just start over. While the holy house was on fire, Everything was plundered that came to hand, and 10,000 of those that were caught were slain. Boy, don't be, get out of here. Call me my naps. What? No, no, boy. You I'm make me punch you. I'm a barber. You're not a barber while I'm live. Move. Go on. Don't be doing that. That's me. Push these back up on the field. I've been watching that video sometimes. I was like, oh my gosh, look at my naps just sticking out. All right, boys, stop going. So unprofessional. We got to get it together. Let me read the sentence over. While the holy house was on fire, everything was plundered that came to hand, and 10,000 of those that were caught were slain, nor was there a commiseration of any age or any reverence of gravity, but children, old but children and old men and profane persons and priests were all slain in the same manner, so that this war went round all sorts of men and brought them to destruction as well as those that made supplication for their lives as those that defended themselves by fighting. The flame also carried along the way and made an echo together with the groans of those that were slain and because this hill was high and the works at the temple were very great, no one, hold on. And because this hill was high and the works at the temple were very great, one would have thought the whole city had been on fire. Nor can one imagine anything either greater or more horrible than this noise. For there was at once a shout of the Roman legions who were marching all together and a sad clamor of the seditious who were now surrendered with fire and sword. The people also that were left above were beaten back upon the enemy and under a great consternation and made sad moans at the, 
at the calamity they were under. The multitude also that was in the city joined in this outcry with those that were upon the hill. And besides, many of those were worn away by the famine, and their mouths almost closed when they saw the fire of the holy house. They exerted their utmost strength and break out into groans and outcries again. Perea, 17, it has 17 in parentheses. Perea, 17, did also return the echo as well as the mountains round about the city and augmented the force of the entire noise. Yet was the misery itself more terrible than this disorder. For one would have thought that the hill itself on which the temple stood was seething hot as full of fire on every part of it that the blood was larger in quantity than the fire and those that were slain more in number than those that slew them for the ground did nowhere appear visible for the dead bodies that lay on it but the soldiers went over heaps of bodies as they ran upon such as fled from them and now it was that the multitude of the robbers were thrust out of the inner court of the temple by the Romans and had much ado to get into the outward court and from thence into the city while the remainder of the populace fled into the cloister of that outer court. As for the priests, some of them plucked up from the holy house the spikes, 18, well, this is a reference 18. There's some reference in the back, it has 18. As for the priests, some of them plucked up from the holy house the spikes that were upon it with their bases, which were made of lead, and shot them at the Romans instead of darts. But then, as they gained nothing by doing so, and as the fire burst out upon them, they retired to the wall that was eight cubits broad, and there they tarried. Yet did two of these of the eminence, yet did two of these of eminence among them who might have saved themselves by going over to the Romans or have borne up with courage and taken their fortune with others, throw themselves into the fire and were burnt together with the holy house. Their names were Marius, the son of Belvis, and Joseph, the son of Delius. And now, this is, I'm still quoting, this is a long section that he put, oh my God. Okay, I'm going to be reading this for the next couple pages. Okay, so pay attention to the story. I'm sure he's going to sum it up when we get done. Because I don't forgot half of what I just read. <laughs> but then as they gained nothing by doing so, and as the fire burst out upon them, they retired to the wall that was eight cubits broad, and there they tarried. Yet did two of these of eminence among them, who might have saved themselves by going over to the Romans, or have borne up with courage and taken their fortune with the others, throw themselves into the fire and were burnt together with the holy house. Their names were Marius, the son of Belgus, and Joseph, the son of Delius. And now the Romans, judging that it was in vain to spare what was round about the holy house, burnt all those places as also the remains of the cloisters and the gates, to accept it, the one on the east side and the other on the south, both which, however, they burnt afterward. Yes. Mm, okay. Okay. Put these oranges over there, please. They also burnt down the treasury chambers in which was an immense quantity of money and an immense number of garments and other precious goods there reposited and to speak all in a few words, there was that the entire riches of the Jews were heaped up together, while the rich people had there built themselves chambers to contain such furniture. The soldiers also came to the rest of the cloisters that were in the outer court of the temple, whither the women and the children and the great mixed multitude of the people fled in number about 6,000. But before Caesar had determined anything about these people or given the commanders any orders relating to them, the soldiers were in such a rage that they set the cloister on fire 
by which means it came to pass that some of these were destroyed by throwing themselves down headlong, and some were burnt in the cloisters themselves, nor did any one of them escape with his life. We got some Mariah Boca Toe, Cadillac T. Shalom. Josiah. Shalom. Okay. A false prophet was the occasion of these people's destruction who had made a public proclamation in the city that very day that Yahuwah commanded them to get upon the temple and that they and that they there I'm sorry and that there they should receive miraculous signs of their deliverance. Now there was then a great number of false prophets suborned by the tyrants to impose on the people who denounced this to them that they should wait for deliverance from God, and this was in order to keep them from deserting, that they might be buoyed up above fear and care by such hopes, which is clearly what we can still see that pinned down, right? Kind of keep people at bay, you keep pushing these false prophecies, and giving them hope for something that's never going to happen for them, right? Okay, but I digress. Now, there was a there was then a great number of false prophets suborned by the prophets to impose on the people who should denounce this to them that they should wait for deliverance from God. And this was in order to keep them from deserting and that they might be buoyed up above fear and care by such hopes. Now a man that is in adversity does easily comply with such promises. For when such a seducer makes him believe that he shall be delivered from those miseries which oppress him, then it is that the patient is full of hopes of, of such his deliverance. You should kind of like just make that a plaque. And everywhere, you know, people are deluded. Just don't say nothing to them. The plaque should just be shown, right? Put on some face paint or something to get their attention. Oh, you got a parade? You got a mom? Mm mm. You're going to be quiet with a face that gets your attention so you can read the sign, give you something to think about. Let you think about this. You think about this. We're just going to hold a sign, right? You clearly ain't listening to nobody. When well, you listen to somebody, but you ain't listening to the truth, they deluded you to think that what you're hearing is the truth, but it's not. Thus were the miserable people persuaded by these deceivers and such as believe God himself while they did not attend nor give credit to the signs that were so evident and did so plainly foretell their future desolation their future desolation but like men infatuated without eye, without either eyes to see or minds to consider did not regard the denunciations that God made to them Thus, there was a star resembling a sword which stood over the city and a comet that continued a whole year. Thus, also, before the Jews' rebellion and before those commotions which preceded the war, when the people were come in great crowds to the Feast of Unleavened Bread on the eighth day of the month of Xanthicus, which is Nisan, and at the <coughs> ninth hour of the night, so great a light shone around the altar of the holy house that it appeared to be bright daytime, which lasted for half an hour. This light seemed to be a good sign to the unskillful, but was so interpreted by the sacred scribes as to pretend those events that follow immediately upon it. At the same festival also, a heifer, as she was led by the high priest to be sacrificed, brought forth a lamb in the midst of the temple. Moreover, the eastern gate of the inner court of the temple, which was of brass and vastly heavy, and had been with difficulty shut by twenty men, and rested upon a basis armed with iron, and had bolts fastened very deep into the firm floor, which was there made of one entire stone, was seen to be open of its own accord about the sixth hour of the night. Now those that kept watch in the temple came hereupon running to the captain of the temple 
and told him of it, who then came up thither, and without great difficulty was able to shut the gate again. This also appeared to the vulgar to be a very happy prodigy, as if God did thereby open them the gate of happiness. But the men of learning understood it, that the security of their holy house was dissolved of its own accord, and that the gate was open for the advantage of their enemies. So these publicly declared that the signal foreshadowed the desolation that was coming upon them. Besides these, a few days after that feast, on the one and twentieth day of the month, Artemis, which is I Iliar, Iyar, I or Liar. It could be I, I think it's an I. Iyar. Correct me if you know. So these publicly declared that the signal foreshadowed the desolation that was coming upon them. Besides these, a few days after that feast, on the one and twentieth day of the month, Artemisius, Artemis, I just pronounced that wrong, Ilar, a certain prodigious, prodigious and incredible phenomenon appeared. I suppose the account of it would seem to be a fable were it not related by those that saw it, and were not the events that follow it of so considerable a nature as to deserve such signals. For before sunsetting, chariots and troops of soldiers in their armor were seen running about among the clouds and surrounding of the cities. Moreover, at that feast, which we call Pentecost, as the priests were going by you, night... You yell me really fast. Yeah, I'll yell for you when I'm about to end it. Okay. All right. Boy, yeah, if you was here yesterday, she wasn't asleep. Boy, I heard it from her when we logged out. Got called for it, right? Remember they said, oh, she's asleep. And Josh even went to go check. He said, yep, she's asleep. I ended the video like three minutes after I ended the video. Here she come waltzing down here. I'm like, <gasps> and she just went off. I'm like, sis, they told me you were asleep. I wasn't asleep, mom. And then she commenced to fighting with her brothers. Like, almost had to break up a fight. I had to stop her. She like went in. And it was shortly after that. I just took her with me when we left to go to the store. Okay. Moreover, at that feast, which we call Pentecost, as the priests were going by night into the inner court of the temple, as their custom was to perform their sacred ministrations, they said that in the first place they felt a quaking and heard a great noise. And after that they heard a sound of a great multitude saying, Let us remove hence. End quote. At this point in the passage, Josephus begins his description of the character I refer to as the woe saying Jesus. Quote, and it's another whole, another page and a half of this quote. All right, so now we get to this point, he, but he wanted to point it out, so I ended that quote. Quote, what is still more terrible, there was one Jesus, the son of Ananus, Anna, An, Ananus, Aeneas. I think it's Aeneas. Okay. But what was still more terrible, there was one Jesus, the son of Aeneas, a plebeian and a husbandman who four years before the war began and at the same time when the city was in very great peace and prosperity came to that feast whereupon it is our custom for everyone to make tabernacles to God in the temple began on a sudden Begin on a sudden to cry aloud, a voice from the east, a voice from the west, a voice from the four winds, a voice against Jerusalem and the holy house, a voice against the bridegrooms and the brides, and a voice against this whole people. This was his cry as he went about by day and by night in all the lanes of the city. However, certain of the most eminent among the populace had great indignation at this dire cry of his and took up the man and gave him a great number of severe stripes yet did not he either say anything for himself or anything particular to those that chastised him 
but still went on with the same words which he cried before. Hereupon, our rulers, supposing, as the case proved to be, that this was a sort of divine fury in the man, brought him to the Roman procurator, where he was whipped till his bones were laid bare, yet he did not make any supplication for himself, nor shed any tears, but turning his voice to the most lamentable tone possible, at every stroke of the whip his answer was, Woe, woe to Jerusalem. And when Albinus, for he was then our procurator, asked him who he was, and whence he came, and why he uttered such words, he made no manner of reply to what he said, but still did not leave off his melancholy ditty. All I'm sorry, still did not leave off his melancholy, melancholy, blah, melancholy ditty. Do you know where my pajamas are? Yes, I washed them, I folded them, and I put them in your drawer. You can go check. I, I was gonna put Yeah, but you didn't, so you stuck in your basketball shorts. All right, so. And when Albinus, but he was then our procreator, asked him who he, uh, you got to be careful, boy. You about to knock that out and go in the whole thing. Let's just put this right here for a second. Don't move that. I got that kind of, I got a jerry rigged. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't, we got somebody here named Jerry. No offense. I, I thought I was, because you know, Okay, let me just. Now, that was like, I just, I just thought about it. No, like, disrespect to the Jerry. No, okay, sorry, y'all. I was use, I wasn't using the other word, the N I G G A word, and decided to use. Y'all get it. Up. All right. And when Albinus, for he was then our procreator, asked him who he was and whence he came. And why he uttered such words, he made no manner of reply to what he said, but still did not leave off his melancholy ditty, till Albinus took him to be a madman and dismissed him. Now, during all the time that passed before the war began, this man did not go near any of the citizens, nor was seen by them while he said so, but he said every day uttered these lamentable words as if it were his premeditated vow, woe, woe to Jerusalem. Nor did he give ill words to any of those that beat him every day, nor good words to those that gave him food. But this was his reply to all men, and indeed no other than a melancholy presage of what was to come. This cry of his was loudest at the festivals, and he continued this ditty for seven years, and five months without growing hoarse or being tired therewith until the very time that he saw his presage in earnest fulfilled in our siege when it ceased. For as he was going round about the wall, he cried out with his utmost force, Woe, woe to the city again and to the people and to the holy house. And just as he added at last, woe woe to myself also there came a stone out of one of the engines and smote him and killed him immediately and as he was uttering the very same presages he gave up the ghost now if anyone consider these things he will find that god takes care of mankind and by all ways possible foreshadows to our race what is for their preservation and that men perish by those miseries which they madly and voluntarily bring upon themselves. For Jews, by demolishing the tower of Antonia, had made their temple four square, while at the same time they had it written in their sacred oracles, that then should their city be taken, as well as their holy house, when once their temple should become four square. Now, but now, what did the most? But now, what did the most? What did the most elevate them in undertaking this war? 
was an ambiguous oracle that was also found in their sacred writings how about that time one from their country should become governor of the habitable earth the jews took this prediction to belong to themselves in particular and many of the wise men were thereby deceived in their determination now this oracle certainly denoted the government of vespasian who was appointed emperor in judea however it is not possible for men to avoid fate although they see it beforehand but these men interpreted some of these signals according to their own pleasure and some of them they utterly despised until their madness was demonstrated both by taking of both by the taking of their city and their own destruction end quote and that's reference 128 that you can find in the back in matthew 23 and 24 jesus expresses what had been called astrological or doomsday vision in fact the entire passage appears to be nothing other than a prophecy of events and details that have occurred during titus's destruction of jerusalem all of which can be found in josephus's passage above which describes that event the related new testament passages yeah. follow yes. your top drawer check the top drawer matter of fact in the top drawer in the middle stack yes top drawer middle stack you better call me that so awesome come on preacher pamela boy okay in matthew in matthew 23 and 24 jesus expresses what has been called his eschatological or doomsday vision in fact the entire passage appears to be nothing other than a prophecy of events and details that have occurred during titus's destruction of jerusalem all of which can be found in josephus's passage above which describes that event the related new testament passages follow the passage contains as jesus himself describes them the signs that would indicate that the son of man has come to destroy jerusalem quote jesus had left the temple and was going on his way when his disciples came and called his attention to the temple buildings oh oh yeah you're gonna read all of this too okay okay this is a long one too although he put reference one let me look at reference 129 i know this is reference 129 okay i thought so this is this this quote i'm about to read now is actually matthew 24 verses 1 through 44 that's why i was like oh because he put the whole thing here okay read the last sentence the related new testament passages follow the passage contains as jesus himself describes them the signs that would indicate that the son of man has come to destroy jerusalem quote remember this is matthew 24 1 through 44 jesus had left the temple and was going on his way when his disciples came and called his attention to the temple buildings you see all these he replied in solemn truth i tell you that there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be pulled down afterwards he was on the mount of olives and was seated there when the disciples came to him apart from the others and said tell us when this will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the close of the age take care that no one misleads you answers jesus for many will come assuming my name and saying i am the christ and they will lead many astray and before and before long you will hear of wars and rumors of wars do not be alarmed for such things must be but the end is not yet for nation will rise in arms against nation kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines bless you bless you and bless you for nation will rise in arms against nation 
kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. For all these miseries are but like the early pains of childbirth. That time they will deliver you up to punishment and will put you to death, and you will be objects of hatred to all nations because you are called by my name. Then they will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and lead multitudes astray. And because of the prevalent disregard of God's law, the love of the great majority will grow cold. But those who stand firm to the end shall be saved. And this good news of the kingdom shall be proclaimed throughout the whole world to set the evidence before all the Gentiles, and then the end will come. When you have seen, to use the language of the prophet Daniel, the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, let the reader observe those words. Then let those who are in Judea escape to the hills. Let him who is on the roof not go down to fetch what is in his house, nor let him who is outside the city stay to pick up his outer garment. And at last, for the women who at that time are with child or have infants, but pray that your flight may not be in winter, nor on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world, and assuredly never will be again. And if those days had not been cut short, no one would escape. But for the sake of God's own people, those days will be cut short. If at that time anyone should say to you, See, here is the Christ, or hear, give no credence to it. For there will rise up false Christs and false prophets, displaying wonderful signs and prodigies, so as to deceive, were it possible, were it possible, even God's own people. Remember, I have forewarned you. If therefore they should say to you, See, he is in the desert, do not go out there, or see, he is indoors in the room, do not believe it. For just as lightning flashes in the east and is seen to the very west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the dead body is, there will be... Oh, you talking and laughing on him. He's so loud. He just laughed and cackled loud. For just as the lightning flashes in the east and is seen in the very west, so will the coming of the sun of so bleh, sorry. Jeremiah, stop humming, you throwing me out. I'm getting tongue tied. Okay. For just as the lightning flashes in the east and is seen to the very west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the dead body is, there will the eagles flock together. But immediately after those times of distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not shed her light, the stars will fall from the firmament, and the forces which control the heavens will be disordered and disturbed. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in the sky, and then will all the nations of the earth lament when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with great power and glory. And he will send out his angels, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds and from the end of heaven, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn from the fig tree the lesson it teaches. As soon as it as soon as its branches have now become soft and it is bursting into leaf, you will all know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these signs, may be sure that he is near at your very door. I tell you in solemn truth that the present generation will certainly not pass away without all these things first taking place. Earth and sky will pass away, but it is certain that my words will not pass away. But as to the day and the exact time, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. For as it was in the time of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. At that time, before the deluge, men were busy eating and drinking, 
taking wives or giving them up to the very day when Noah entered the ark. Nor did they realize any danger till the deluge came and swept them all away. So it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Then will two men be in the open country. One will be taken away and one left behind. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left behind. Be on alert, therefore, for you do not know the day on which your Lord is coming. But of this be assured, that if the master of the house had known the hour at which the robber was coming, he would have kept awake and not have allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for it is at a time when you do not expect him that the Son of Man will come. End quote. Reference 129, which is Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 44. I have divided my analysis of the passage above into several parts. I shall first focus upon the parallels between Josephus's woe singing Jesus and the New Testament's Jesus. There are numerous parallels between the astrological Jesus of Matthew 23 and 24 and the tragic comic, what's the tragic comic Jesus? That might be a part of my, the tragic comic Jesus. People's, I know. I'm ready for the messages today. I got my strength back. <laughs> there are numerous parallels between the astrological Jesus of Matthew 23 and 24 and the tragic comic Jesus described in the passage from Josephus, whom I refer to as the woe saying Jesus. I believe that the work of Josephus intentionally creates a lampoon of the New Testament's Jesus by having the woe saying Jesus share his words, phrases, ideas, and experiences, and obviously by means of their shared name. They are parallel in one, in one other important way. Each gives a list of signs that foretell Jerusalem's impending doom. These lists include a number of identical phrases and concepts. For example, the Jesus of the New Testament Okay, for example, the Jesus of the New Testament. Quote. Sorry, y'all. It's, it is an eyelash. It is. Hold on, y'all. Okay. For example, the Jesus of the New Testament states, quote, For just as the lightning flashes in the east and is seen to the very west, so will the coming of the so will be the coming of the Son of Man, and he will send out his angels, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. End quote. That's Matthew twenty twenty four, verse twenty seven and thirty one. Then will the kingdom of heaven be found to be like unto ten bridesmaids who took their torches and went out to meet the bridegroom and the bride. That's Matthew twenty five and one. The woe saying Jesus also speaks of east and west, the four winds, and bridesmaids and bridegrooms. Notice that the language is used in the same sequence in both works. Quote, if you're going to sit there laughing at whatever you read and making noise, can I take it through the house or to your room, sir? I've been in there too long. I've been in there for a Well, years. hush while you sitting here. Turn a hurt laugh, in there. Laugh inwardly. Okay. Quote, began on a sudden to cry aloud a voice from the east, a voice from the west, a voice from the four winds, a voice against Jerusalem and the holy house, a voice against the bridegrooms and the brides, and a voice against this whole people, end quote. And that's found in Wars of the Jews, pages 6, 5, and 301. I don't know why they number them backwards like that. The woe saying Jesus clearly predicts the destruction of the temple when he says a voice against the holy house the new testament jesus makes the same prediction quote his disciples came and called his attention to the temple buildings you see all these he replied in solemn truth i tell you that there will be not one left here i tell you the truth that there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be pulled down, end quote. That's Matthew 24, 1 through 2. 
The New Testament Jesus uses the word woe eight times during his speech in Matthew 23. Did Jesus in Josephus' passage above, who seemingly lampoons the New Testament Jesus, also constantly repeats the word woe, quote, woe to you blind guys, end quote, Matthew 23, 16. And from the passage in Josephus, woe, woe to the city again, and to the people, and to the holy house, woe, end quote, wars of the Jews, 6, 5, and 309. Both Jesus's are using the word woe to describe the disasters that will come to the inhabitants of Jerusalem when the sun returns. The New Testament Jesus foresees this disaster occurring with the return of the Son of God, while Josephus' woe saying Jesus also foresees this occurring with the coming of a Son of God, this one being Titus. It needs to be pointed out that Matthew 23 and 24 simply divide one speech so that the parallels between these chapters and Josephus' description of the signals that preceded the destruction of the temple should not be taken as unified. I got you. you right on time, too. You came back here about to end this because we are at an hour, four minutes. Let me get to this part. Right. Okay. It, <coughs> excuse me. it needs to be pointed out that Matthew 23 and 24 simply divide one speech so that the parallels between these chapters and Josephus' description of the signs that preceded the destruction of the temple should be taken as unified. The lampoon is made even clearer when Josephus records that the woe-seeing Jesus has a passion experience very similar to that of the Jesus in the New Testament. Like the New Testament Jesus, the woe saying Jesus is taken by eminent Jews to the Roman procurator where he is whipped until his bones are laid bare. Like the New Testament Jesus, he is described as a man with divine fury. That's a Toyota Super. Boy, get, oh, get out of here. That's an old version. That's a 1996. Do I'm I so look sorry. like I care about so a Toyota Super? It's two. That's a two Jesus. Hey, oh my God. It. This production is already unprofessional, son. <laughs> you just add to the unprofessionalism that we. Right, I'm almost done, y'all. I'm about to end this. Josephus links his woe seeing Jesus to the Jesus in the New Testament in yet another way by the date of his death. Josephus enables the reader to calculate this date by stating that the time when the woe saying Jesus began his welling was four years before the war began and that he continues without growing hoarse for seven years and five months. As noted by Eisman, these dates indicated that the woe saying Jesus died on Passover in 70 CE and that's reference 130. This is a precise 40 year generation from the beginning of the ministry of the New Testaments of the New Testaments Jesus who predicted that his prophecies would be fulfilled within 40 years. Jesus Ben Annas is another wry fulfillment of the New Testament Jesus' prophecy. Finally, the completely unbelievable yet very black comedy end of the woe saying Jesus and Josephus is related to the satiric New Testament theme regarding stones. Quote, This cry of his was the loudest at the festivals, and he continued this ditty for seven years and five months without growing hoarse or being tired therewith until the very time that he saw his presage in earnest fulfilled in our siege when it ceased. For as he was going round upon the wall, he cried out with his utmost force, Woe, woe to the city again, and to the people, and to the holy house. And just as he added at last, Woe, woe to myself also. There came a stone out of one of the engines, and smote him, and killed him immediately. And as he, and as he was uttering the very same presages, he gave up the ghost. End quote. <laughs> In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus states that the temple of Jerusalem will be destroyed. 
He then is asked, what sign will foretell its destruction? Jesus responds with a list of signs that will occur before the coming of the Son of Man, the individual whose visitation will bring about the destruction. Josephus also gives a list of signs that, as he relates it, actually did precede the destruction of the temple. When these two lists of signs are compared, a number of parallels emerge. The first parallel is almost too obvious to be noticed, the location and subject of both passages. They both describe activity in and around the temple of Jerusalem and both have to do with its destruction. Further, both Jesus and Josephus flatly declare that they are going to reveal the signs that will precede the destruction of the temple. And we're going to pause right here. But what I'm going to do, because I think we should read this paragraph over before we get into these signs that they began to point out. Let's put it right here. But I make the mark here. So I know. All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me today and all our shenanigans. All right, y'all, we read Job 10, 11, and 12 in Caesar's Messiah, chapter 9, pages 235 to 246. It is Monday. It is Monday, beautiful people. Day, October, I'm sorry. It is Monday, October the 4th, 2021, day 270 of year three of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. Another three-year consecutive day count, day 939. All right, look. You I ain't had a call you. I can still kind of... She, she I pushed him out the way and everything. She don't care. I got in the video. There you go. Okay, I'm going to just say this. When I was a child, I was considered... Um, I was considered the um, Thanos' glove. But then after I'd grown up, they became the Infinity Stones. If you get what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Well, where does that leave Elijah? Okay, bye. Oh, Elijah, he was, y'all, y'all got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> no, girl, don't end it yet. I ain't even did the blessing. <laughs> okay. okay. Elijah was probably our most calm child. Then came the terror. <laughs> Josh, you can do this? Y'all to hear some of my terror stories. But Josh, I really Josh, you can do this? Jeremiah was demon possessed. <laughs> Like, seriously. And there was a time I literally had to cast a demon out of him. Well, I thought I cast a demon out of him. <laughs> Boys get the crap out of me. My sister was there. was like, ooh, that's not Jeremiah. I'm like, I don't know what is going on. What are you doing in your room? What are you watching? What are you listening to? Cut Eminem off. Mm, Eminem. Okay. No, there's nothing wrong with Eminem. Yeah, seriously. Eminem. You see, your whole, look at your life Ew. and your, Ew. even your Ew. whole everything from when you was listening to Eminem Ew. and when you... Ew. Cutting it off. I looked crazy when I was young anyway. I, had I ain't talking about no looking. Eyebrows. I'm talking about your whole state of mind. You can't tell me there's not a difference. You can't tell me there's not a difference. I know there's nothing that goes through my, my, my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would comment yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me do this. <laughs> I'm going to leave my kids alone. Okay. Hold on, y'all. Stop. Chill. What? Josh, what? What was he trying to do? What? What are you trying to do? Boy, okay. Hold on, let me do this. I'm just a close city. He wanna, he wanna. Boy. Oh my gosh, really? Okay, they about to put on a whole production for y'all. Well, uh, welcome to Murphy Family Theater, right? <laughs> Here's what they about to show y'all. I ain't even did the bless. Like seriously, y'all. Seriously. The camera looks scary. Stop. No. Stop. No. Hold on. Okay. Isaiah has on glow in the dark pajamas. Uh, look, boy. Watch the cord. Bella, don't you press that now button. Okay. You can't. They can't really see that it's glowing for real because it's still light in here. Okay. All right, go on. Watch this cord. And Josh want to show you his light up basketball. I'm never going to cut it off. So he bounces the ball. It literally has a battery in it. He bounces the ball and he can play basketball at night. One year. I'm sitting here thinking we should do like some kind of uh, 
I, we gotta find a basketball court, a, the wild something, and see if they'll let us Thank hold you. like a, <laughs> a a basketball thing in the evening or whatever. But they need other players, so don't look for that no time soon. But if we do do something like that, even Ooh, if we do it in basketball court or something at night, go somewhere that's safe, we'll show y'all our neon night basketball game. That's gonna be fun. All right, y'all. Let me do the blessing so we can get out of here. This, this, yeah. is, this is too much. Exactly. All right. I know y'all don't come to see me. Y'all probably come to see their shenanigans anyway. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get some There's a lot of stuff going on, Jack. It is. It is so busy. Blessing. Don't touch anything. Okay, remember y'all, the blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise... Ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah will kneel before us, presenting gifts, and will guard us with a hedge of protection. Yahuwah will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards us, bringing order, and he will provide us with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahuwah will lift up his wholeness of being and look upon us, and he will set in place all we need to be whole and complete. And they shall put my name upon the children of israel and i will bless them all right beautiful people but if y'all read the blessing enough y'all probably more familiar with it saying this yeah and you who will speak unto moses saying speak unto aaron and unto his son saying on this wise you shall bless the children of israel saying unto them you who will bless us and keep us you who will make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us you who will lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace and they shall put my name upon the children of israel and i will bless them the version we read is a more accurate rendering of what the scroll said but everybody's familiar with the kjv version but either way the blessing still remains the same you who blesses us you who and you who alone all right beautiful people so that right, girl look okay. Okay. Leave that there they can see you you ain't got to move that all right y'all that's it we out of here Love y'all. I will see y'all tomorrow. tomorrow. No. Tomorrow's the Sabbath. Yes. Tomorrow's the Sabbath. Wait a minute. The fifth. Yep. Tomorrow's the last Sabbath of this moon cycle, y'all. We'll be looking for the new moon coming up this uh, I just saw the moon this come Thursday. Up. I also, notice up. with this changing of the moon cycle of the I month. Remember how I told you? When it rotates, there's this pattern that it takes. We're in this pattern where it, it skips a day, right? So for the last few months, is that when the Sabbath day changes, Mommy. it's been going from Friday Mom. to Mommy. Saturday Mom. to Sunday to Monday Mommy. to um, Tuesday. Mm. Now the, the, it skips Wednesday and it jumps to Thursday. I still quite mm. have... I know that there's a reason why the pattern, I just haven't figured it out yet, but I notice it's a pattern I've noticed over the Saturday. last Saturday. Where at a certain month, it'll skip a day, so it doesn't just rotate simultaneously throughout all the days of the week, although it will hit that day that it skipped. Um, but at a certain point, it skips a day and jumps. You know, so we're at that point where it jumps, right? Um, and I'm wondering if it has to do... With like the changing of the season or anything, I don't, I don't know. Hi, sure. I don't know. Um, but this is that. So when we come back, um, if if we spot the new moon on Thursday, which is what we pre-calculate, remember we still watch. Do our due diligence, staying out there and watch. If the new moon does show on the evening of the seventh, which would be this Thursday, the Sabbath for this moon cycle will then fall every Thursday. All right, y'all. That's it. She said, she responded, hey, Bella. She said, hi, Bella. Hi, Nani. Okay, y'all. All right. So, we done. Let's go ahead and get out of here. I love y'all. Oh, Mom, don't forget to call me when you get back to the house. All right. I love y'all. That's it. I'll see y'all Wednesday, bright and early, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace. 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 Peace.